Yo, what's up everyone? Welcome to your number one channel. Today we have a very high profile guest, um, Sia Metan, also known as Leka. Yes, sir. For this uh, book launch, you know? mm. Yeah, so thank you so much for your time, my Thank you, my brother. Yeah, thank you so much. So maybe, just to be brief, can you tell us where you're from and how you grew up? I'm from Katlehong. Uh, um, Lahatsi, grew up in a place called Lahatsi for uh, my, as a kid, and then as a teenager, I moved to Leondale. Yeah. Um, so I'm from the Eastern, I'm from Kurulin, basically. Yeah. Okay, and then also from the Eastern, we all know that's where the Spada, uh, Spada Camp started in Leondale. Can you also maybe tell us about that? How did you all come together to create um, or to form that group? I mean, we are all friends, so, so we started off as friends and not really as a uh, as a music group. We started with friends who like had this common interest of making hip hop music. So we basically decided then that okay cool if we have this common interest of making hip hop music why don't we just become a group. So we became a group and that's why the numbers were so big as in the members because we're all just friends. We decided to create one group. Yeah. And then maybe as friends when did you realize that this is more than friendship? Maybe this is also going into business or making it big in the SA uh, music industry? I mean, we, I guess we wanted to challenge the system all the time. Firstly, we felt that like um, the South African music industry wasn't doing the right thing with regards to the acknowledgement of South African hip hop. Yeah. So we pushed to try and make that change by challenging the industry and getting ourselves on the Summer Awards. And we won our first Summer Award. And, um, and that literally stopped, people started seeing hip hop differently. So, and then when we sold records, when we sold like uh, our first gold and platinum records, that's when they, people were like, okay, this thing is serious, you know? Yeah. So for us, we're always serious about it, but we're always having fun. Yeah. But it's for people, people are the ones that literally caught up with the seriousness later. Yeah. Okay. And then for your side, maybe as young as you were, as a group, would you say that maybe that was also challenging or maybe that also made things easier? I mean, because we were not doing this music with the hopes that we'll one day make money or we one day be something, there wasn't any real challenges or we never felt any type of uh, um, challenges as if like this thing is not going to happen or something's going to happen. We never knew what was going to happen. We just knew that the industry wasn't giving us the right attention, you know? Yeah. Mm. And then also uh, moving into maybe the solo careers after Squatter Camp, how did that con conversation go about? I think that guys, sorry. I think that with regards to the solo careers, guys started feeling they wanted to express themselves more on their own. Because what Square Camp does, you only have eight bars and you have to talk about a topic that everybody agrees on. So you don't have the autonomy of completely being yourself. So solo albums gave everyone the opportunity to have that full autonomy to say what they want, you know. And because we still had a relationship, some guys, you find Flavor will take some choruses or things or ideas from squatter camps that we never used and he'd put that and make that a full song you know so like uh uh um like like you know uh yeah so that's it you know yeah. and then also maybe after the solo careers you then maybe in our eyes moved into the digital space of the music and not in, in the front line of making music how was that also maybe transitioning um, for me, I just I was already doing digital content during Squatter Camp times, but we just never had time because we were musicians. So there's a platform called Ventilation.coza. We were running a platform like that already. Um, and then in 2013, I just became serious about it and and um, not knowing what was going to happen. And you know, we got to where we are today. You know. And with the Slicker on Life being maybe in the forefront of SA Hip Hop and digital content, what would you say to maybe someone else who is into that space or who wants to venture into that space? I mean, always like um, 
tell stories of the things that are true to you, the people that like you connect with, who other people could also connect with. That's the beauty of like this content thing. There's no rules. The only thing is, so the only, the only rule that I would say if you want to grow. Sorry, it's a bit late. So I'm a bit I apologize for yawning. Um, the only rule that I would say if you're making content is stay consistent. You know, if you're going to do it every week or every two weeks, do it every week and every two weeks. When you stop, people forget you lose your audience. Mm. And then being in the game for so long, what would you say maybe to someone who's upcoming or the new artist in the game right now? Um, my thing is that create your own world, you know. The world has already created what we know. You have the opportunity, you are alive to create your own world. When you create your own world, you bring people into your world and then you start making a difference in people's lives and then you start contributing to the things that already exist in the world so your ideas are your world you know what i mean um yeah okay. coming into the book that brought us here today um what maybe inspired you to write a book and not another album or i wasn't going to write a book i was approached by the person who actually did the writing, Helen, she approached me to write this book, and um, I uh, and I was I was I was a little bit reluctant to it, but she was consistent and she kept meeting up with me to do it, and it took us three years and we finally got it done. You know? yeah. And then would you say maybe also in that three years, um, it was quite difficult or how would you share that experience? No, it wasn't. It was just like time and remembering. We just were setting up a meeting, like you set up a meeting with somebody. Yeah. They have the questions, they're ready to ask you and you talk. For me it was easy. I'm sure for Helen it was not as easy as I make it. Yeah. But yeah, that was because she had to go write everything else yeah. and make it make sense. Wow, so excited for the book and we're looking forward to just reading the book. Eh? What else maybe can we expect from you as an individual i mean we definitely are looking at like creating a, a platform for creatives from a financial perspective um a couple of things you know we're looking at launching that in a week or so so we're excited about that okay thank you so much mr speaker for your time thank you for your time shout out ciao